In this talk, I'm going to provide bird's eye view of how platform engineering and operations can benefit from machine learning and AI NLP techniques. The primary goal of this talk is to whet your appetite to explore further. The first few minutes, I'm going to focus briefly on what is machine learning and then move on to how we can apply ML analytics in the platform engineering and operation context. In the last 20 years, we have seen a massive digital transformation across all the industry verticals, as you see. These days, AI is all around us playing an active role from Xfinity voice remotes to smart assistants, disease mapping, conversational bots, search engines, product recommendations to self-driving cars and many more applications. What's interesting is that machine learning and AI has been around for several decades. In fact, the first neural network was introduced as early as 1940s. I have studied machine learning 20 years ago, but in the recent years with the advent of IoT and industrial IoT, the adoption of machine learning and AI application has seen an exponential growth these days. The other thing I wanted to clarify is around the terminology. When we say AI, what we meant is machine learning. The new name for AI is AGI, Artificial General Intelligence. Now let's see what is machine learning is all about. There are gazillion ways to introduce machine learning, but I find this particular definition very interesting. This is from the book, The Master Algorithm by Professor Pedro Domingos from University of Washington. Machine learning is automatic discovery of knowledge given data. Computers can discover orders of magnitude faster and more knowledge in a given amount of time. For example, our GPS device automatically extracts maps, discovers the knowledge about the location, and all that knowledge resides in the machine itself. We don't have to know anything about it. All we need to do is just key in the destination and boom, there you go. This is the future of the knowledge, I believe. All the knowledge is discovered by machines, extracted by machines and resides in machines. How do computers discover knowledge? There are five main approaches. The first one is filling the gaps in the existing knowledge. This is pretty much how scientists work. They make observations, hypothesize theories to explain them, validate those theories to see if they fall short, then either adjust them or discard them or try completely new ones. Gravitation is one such example. Our understanding of gravitation is evolving and we keep filling the gaps as we discover new evidence. The second one is emulate the brain. The brain universe within about 200 billion clueless, mindless neurons interconnected, firing all the time. This is the greatest learning and predictive machine on earth. So take inspiration, at least understand enough so that we can reverse engineer and apply these findings in machine learning. The third is simulate evolution. This is even more interesting. The evolution, according to evolutionary biologists, is even greater algorithm than brain because First of all, it made the brain, it made the human body, it made all life forms on earth. So it's worth figuring it out, how it works, so that we can apply this in machine learning. The fourth one is systematically reducing the uncertainty. We humans hate uncertainty, isn't it? All the knowledge 
that's induced from data is not necessarily certain. The way to learn is to quantify that uncertainty. The best way to do is, is using the Bayes theorem. As we see more evidence, the probability of different hypotheses evolve and we keep adjusting. The fifth one is reason by analogy. In fact, the most simplest and intuitive of all. There's a lot of evidence in psychology that we humans do it all the time. When we are faced with a new situation, we try to find matching experience and then transfer that solution that we are already familiar with to the new situation we are faced with. As you can see, machine learning is not only important in our lives, but also quite fascinating to study uh, because during the process, we get to touch many other scientific disciplines ranging from logic, philosophy, psychology, neuroscience, evolutionary biology, epistemology, human bias, data ethics, of course, mathematics, algebra, matrices, calculus, statistics, and probability. Now that we have seen a quick summary of machine learning, hope that gives some context. The remainder of the talk, I would like to focus on how we can leverage machine learning in the context of platform engineering and operations. These days, everything that we talk about is smart. Smartphones, smart homes, smart buildings, smart highways, smart factories, and yeah, smart cities. Where is the intelligence to these devices or things at the edge coming from? Of course, from the backend services that they talk to. Let me elaborate a little bit more. These devices are the things on the edge talk to an API gateway, and then that in turn talks to several other microservices, all of which are hosted on cloud platforms such as Cloud Foundry or Kubernetes. And these platforms play a key role in managing the complex life cycle of these applications and services that make these devices and things appear smart on the edge. And these platforms manage the complexity at a very high scale. The keyword here is at scale running at scale. We just have seen how platforms can shine when running at scale. What does this mean? We are entering the province of machine learning. The reason why I say that is these platforms manage massive amount of workloads that generate large volumes of data at an increasing velocity and the data that it generates is of different kinds of formats, types, and sizes. And there are many application instances that are running, have different log formats and generate 100,000 logs per minute. And if you have 1,000 ser services that are running, just imagine the, the scale at which the data is generated. And this is what exactly a precondition for machine learning. Now, we have seen how platforms can generate large amounts of data and machine learning can thrive on that data. These two ecosystems can benefit from each other, form a symbiotic association. Platforms generating large variety and volumes and at increasing velocity of data can feed into the, the machine learning analytics and the machine learning analytics takes this input and generate the intelligence that is required for the platform engineering and operation. As the platforms mature and evolve and embrace ML analytics, they go through these four phases. Before we go further, let's take a look at 
the current state of platform operations and monitoring. Often we set up agents and exporters and then configure alerts for known symptoms. Either we get alerted or detect the incidents and then we manually search the logs for the root cause. Eventually we'll find the root cause and then resolve it. Oftentimes we are not that lucky, so we discover new problems. So we got to configure new alert rules or tune the existing dashboards. All this process is entirely manual, tedious, time consuming. Moreover, it affects the MTTR and also creates a lot of alert fatigue. For the most part, what we receive are false alarms. Probably this is okay back in those days when we have very few number of services and users and customer base. But with the current industry trends, we have billions of devices, millions of users, hundreds and thousands of services and corresponding log streams. This approach is not going to be scalable anymore. So this is where the platform operations embrace the machine learning analytics. The goal of this analytics effort is to discover patterns automatically, uh, the patterns or the clusters or the groups that are naturally occurring in the data that can be used to predict incidents and emerging behavior. And these patterns then can be used to determine the root cause of the systems to intelligently drive the automation to resolve them. So let me elaborate each of these phases a little bit more. The descriptive analytics is really straightforward where we have all the visualizations and dashboards, uh, but the uh, next generation platform uh, should be capable of allowing uh, data at rest as well as data in motion that is both historical and real-time streaming and should be able to analyze at the point of ingestion itself without having to save it to the database before it can be analyzed. And it, sh and it should also be able to correlate multiple streams of uh, uh, streaming real-time data along with the historical data. And the next is the diagnostics. Uh, here's where we can leverage some of the statistical and probability, probabilistic analysis, such as event correlation, aggregation, filtering, clustering, and classification uh, algorithms. Uh, to automatically discover the patterns, uh, clusters, or groups um, so that we can establish uh, a normal behavior of the system and any aberrations from this uh, normal patterns or the system behavior uh, can be uh, classified as anomalies and therefore help us uh, detecting the anomalies. But, but the most important thing to note is these anomalies um that are detected uh, should not be should just go beyond the static thresholds and numeric outliers uh, this is where the topological analysis um, or the graph based analysis helps establishing the context uh, as well as the seasonality of these anomalies otherwise uh, the patterns that are discovered may be valid but they may not be relevant or actionable um, adding the uh, graph and bottleneck analysis uh, to these anomalies uh, greatly improve uh, the uh, effectiveness of uh, detecting these patterns and way to focus the remediation efforts. Uh, once we uh, detect these patterns and making sure they have context and the uh, time, co time bound context, uh, then we can use these patterns um, correlate with the historical instance and should be able to predict emerging behavior and possible instance. And that will help us move to the next phase, which is prescribing a solution. Um, this is where things get really interesting. Um, when it comes to uh, the all the phases that I talked about, descriptive, diagnostic, predictive, uh, is all automatic, um, should be automatic. Uh, when it comes to prescriptive, this can be a little bit uh, semi-automatic because the, solution, the solutions that are suggested has some probability. Uh, therefore, 
it, it either we can either completely leave it to the machines to take action or can and require a validation step before we trigger the automation and these solutions for the most part come from either a historical knowledge base or uh, to the recurring problems or probably can be uh, determined by a cried source in real time now that we have seen how the next generation of platforms can benefit using machine learning analytics and i walked through those four phases i would like to elaborate a little bit more on the last phase which is prescribed solution to drive intelligent automation this approach can also be used for chatbots or chat apps to drive the customer engagement or interaction the first r is record start with all the known historical knowledge the known symptoms and the corresponding solutions it could be a script or a runbook and preferably store them in a nosql or a graph database make sure all the symptoms are appropriately tagged so that it can be classified into different problem categories and attach them with the corresponding runbooks or scripts once the platform detects incidents it can research through this knowledge database and retrieve the corresponding problem categories along with the corresponding runbooks or or the solution scripts and then pass on to the next phase which is recommendation system and at this point the platform should be able to provide solutions with varying degrees of probability based on the historical incidents and the effectiveness of the resolution now the platform can take it further either it can leave the action entirely to the machine to run the automation script or require a validation step so that it can trigger the automation and the last step repeat which is which forms a positive feedback loop and track the resolution of the effectiveness and provide a feedback it could be a simple yes or no so that we can leverage this in future instance so this kind of leads to self driving automation imagine you are on a vacation and you are called on a bridge to resolve an incident versus when the incident occurs the robots take over and resolve the incident for you which one would you prefer obviously the later one the self driving automation which sounds very aspirational at the moment sounds ambitious but there is a way to get there start taking the incremental approach start with the applications that are very low risk and less critical applications apply things like even categorization correlation anomaly detection clustering algorithms the result of self driving automation is either launching a script or a runbook it could be as simple as rebooting the vm re recreating the vm or restarting the process or launching an additional container generally to start with we do not want to leave the action entirely to the machine require a validation step before the automation can trigger but still you can just with a click of a button while you're on vacation and these scripts are run uh, run books should be as i mentioned should be for a very low risk operations and the success of ai self driving automation can be measured by tracking the reduction in the number of false alarms and reducing the alert fatigue and also in avoiding uh, the incidents that could potentially cause an outage so in summary the goal of next generation smart intelligent platforms that are powered by ai ops popularly known as is to reduce the alert fatigue and false alarms Uh, using pattern matching and clustering algorithms capture multivariate anomalies that go beyond static thresholds and numeric outliers and detect anomalies um, that 
and diagnose them, the cause of instance using decision trees, random forests, uh, and topological analysis, uh, and then predict the trends that could potentially cause an outage, possibly prevent them, and prescribe solutions uh, with some probability uh, and offer actions that resolve them either directly from determined from the crowdsource or or from a matching solution from the existing knowledge repo. And the last two are my favorite, the self-driving automation for low risk to medium risk recurring tasks um, and, 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 and improving the customer engagement and interaction using the chatbots and virtual assistants. Thank you for listening and thanks Open Source Cloud Foundry to give me the opportunity to present you all.